Hi, I'm Taylor. One question I get asked a lot about how to model venture funds is how I model uh, an investment strategy that spans different types of investments. So there's many different ways to tackle this. One of the first things I try to understand is, okay, so if you have a strategy that spans multiple investments, are these investments where you're, where you're um, investing across through follow-ons and additional stages? Like you always invest at a seed and you continue to invest in follow-ons for a certain number of stages as the companies progress? Or do you have a strategy where you are doing your first checks into seed and your first checks into A and then you do follow-ons at both stages or your first checks into seed and first checks into A and no follow-ons at all, at all? So I try to understand how that, that mix kind of goes in there. Uh, the right way to model that kind of depends. So I want to show you a couple of different examples using a couple of like template models. The first one I have here is just the, the overall model, which doesn't try to do cash flows over time, which just is your overall kind of portfolio construction. And so the normal way that I kind of model these is I say, hey, I have a total amount of capital redeployed, and I come up with a, I have an assumption around the allocation of it to new and follow, and then I assume average check sizes. Then it helps me understand basically how many deals get done. The most common things when people want to model out differential uh, investment strategies is they want to assume different check sizes and get an idea of the number of deals they're going to do with both. So they can understand your portfolio diversification between different types of deals. So one easy way to change this is just to create a weighted average. So to take one step back, the two basic ways to do this is to create two entirely separate forecasts of a pool of capital that's allocated to this and a pool of out capital that's allocated to this create two entirely separate forecasts of those pool of, pool of capital and then add them together, right? That's the simple way. The other way is, is just to create a weighted average and then feed it into the model uh, as is. Rather than instead of like trying to calculate out the specifics for each different types of investments, just say, hey, so I'm just gonna take an average and gonna do that. So the average approach using these is that you usually have a structure which uh, has a portfolio construction like this. Uh, you just insert some rows and I will do something like, uh, I'll say, maybe I'll have, um, I will create uh, an extra table which kind of details my portfolio construction in a little more detail. So perhaps I'll have a C strategy and perhaps I'll have an A strategy. And I'll probably do, in this example, I'll have some allocation of like new and follow. Let's just assume I'm doing the same kind of allocation new and follow for C deals than for A deals. And so I may just do an assumption here, which just says percentage of new, right? So I may say, hey, maybe percentage of, um, maybe 60% of my new deals are in seed. I'm sorry, capital, 40% of my capital allocated new is also is in A deals. And I'll assume like an average check size, and let's just say, I'm just gonna flip the numbers here to make a little more sense. Um, and then I'll create a weighted average. So this is just gonna be the sum. I just wanna do a sum of these two to make sure that uh, it's the same. And then here I'm gonna create a weighted average to reflect two different types of investor rates I have in this case. And so now I have an average check size and then I'll take this new and I'll just say it's equal to this. And that will then roll through the rest of it, right? Now, I can get more detail about this. I can structure it a little bit differently. Say, instead of saying percentage of new capital, I can say percentage of total capital and define a different follow-on strategy for both and then have both the new and the follow come from that. Um, I could define the same thing for the follow-on strategy as well, like different, maybe different follow-on strategies for the two, assume a different set, feed into here. Um, I could also go have different re uh, exit expectation returns. So in this one, basically, this is a set of return assumptions. It basically says what percentage of deals are gonna be small, big, big, write-offs, whatever, and the average exit multiple for each one of those, it really comes out to this overall average gross exit multiple. But right now, this is this would be the same return profile applied to both my C deals and my A deals, I can change that. I can make an entirely separate table, which is one for C, one for A, and create a weighted average and feed it in. Um, that basic idea of creating weighted averages is the simplest way to kind of quickly come up with an idea of it. Now that your total proceeds is like effectively a blend of the two, you can always back it out if you really want to like show what the 
total proceeds were from my seed strategy versus my A strategy. You could back it out from the calcs by adding on some calcs so that I haven't really changed anything that's core. Um, but I, either way can work. I think it's useful to use the structure that's the easiest way to do it for yourself in the moment in time before you start building in kind of too much, uh, too much complexity. This same structure works for the, all the models that do cash flows over time as well. So the annual model, uh, that basically has it creates an annual forecast over time from this. You can the same structure exists for portfolio construction. You can do the exact same structure to feed it in. It'll still flow through the rest of it. The key here is the one of the major differences in the model it does it overall is it doesn't really care about what happens to the value of the portfolio over time, right? You're not you're not forecasting your 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 investments over time and when your proceeds happen and then the under, underlying change in the portfolio changes uh, write-offs, um, marking up uh, evaluation investments, change of residual value in those things over time. You're not really doing any of those calcs in the overall model. In the annual forecast, you are. So the the model does some calculations to figure out um, these underlying changes in the value of portfolio over time. It's basically going to, by default, assume that the, you're, if you're averaging a couple of different deals, that's gonna reflect the average of those deals. Sometimes people want to do that, sometimes people don't. Sometimes people want to create very differential strategies for that. And the way the models are built, it's not too hard to do if you really want to. The forecast sheet basically has rows for new investments and fallen investments. You could create, and this basically goes to the form and just says, hey, I have the total capital over the investment time frame. How does it get deployed over time for a new and follow? You could do this calc two times and then add them into this row here. So you could create your own schedule. You could insert row, create a schedule for new investments for your seed strategy, uh, new investments for your A strategy, and then add them together to be this one, right? And then by feeding it into here, the model will automatically deal with the, the, all the rest of the kind of resulting calcs. Same thing for any of the the, uh, the changes, changes in investing capital, unrealized gain, and residual value. You can recalculate them based upon that, especially proceeds as well. Proceeds, for example, if you had so right now the proceeds basically just this is there's a kind of a long formula, but what it's basically doing is it's saying, hey, um, there's a holding period for these different for this one. There's a different, couple of different types of uh, investment outcomes. Um, percentage of company, percentage of investments and percentage of a uh, number of investments that are expected under these different types of exits, average gross exit and multiple and holding period. And so what this form is doing is basically just saying, hey, going back to this table of, you know, the holding period and the average gross exit and multiple from it, um, looking at the capital as deployed, right? so total investments, uh, by the set of cap the capital was deployed in a period of time, um, what happens to it? It just goes back to say, okay, of that amount of capital, uh, how much how much was it you know to write-offs, how much is, was it to all the different types? So you could create two instances of that. You could create one instance, which is your C proceeds, one which is your series L proceeds, using the exact same structure and logic, and then just adding them together here in the proceeds section. And there's a couple other changes to me in this the underlying changes in the, the portfolio calculations to make sure it's kind of fully consistent. But in general, like you can you can break those out in any different like subsegment of areas. So in the annual forecast model that uses a specific portfolio approach, the annual with the portfolio model, it works a little bit differently. In this one, the portfolio construction is created by the actual inputs directly on the portfolio model. So you can input this very specific for each different type of deal, the specific investment, follow on if it happens, the exit exits if it happens, the years when you actually do the investment, the year that it follows. It's all basically like a manual entry of all the, the, the specific deals. So in this case, you can be very specific in doing so. You can be as specific as you want in terms of showing the specifics for each of the types. So you can be uh, very clear in detailing out your portfolio construction strategy with the, and delineate between um, different strategies. What you'll typically then wanna do is you'll wanna then back it out, right? So like the overall numbers in the model is just gonna reflect like total computer capital, total deals, those sort of things. And so what you'll wanna do is then take this, rather than just like having this one line for like this total number of new deals, create a couple extra analysis points to show, okay, well, number of deals for your C strategy, number of deals for your A strategy. Detail that a little bit more. Now. The one level uh, beyond this in terms of level of detail is the 
quarterly based model where I do a portfolio construction approach to this. Now this one has a lot more detail. Now the overall assumptions in terms of allocation of capital check size is still the same. What's different about this one is that it has a much more detailed structure for showing what happens to that company over time. You actually, this portfolio structure sheet, uh, the inputs are structured around ownership percentage, uh, uh, valuation over time, graduation rates, failure rates, Parado amounts, timing to exits, exit to timing, um, time, exit amounts basically at each different round. And so it uses this to create an estimate of like the overall portfolio, uh, what percentage of companies exit at certain points, um, what their valuation is, what do you get diluted by the end is. So it's much more specific in showing you know, how a company changes over time. Now, you can still use the same assumption, it's the same weighted average assumption we showed before. Create a weighted average for your C and A, change it into here, and then if you want to, you can then go and let's go out and assume that those investments flow through the same progression. And then the, this, this logic here is like seed, series A, series B. It doesn't really reflect the same thing. It reflects like first check, second check, third check, fourth check, fifth check. Because if it's an average of your seed and your series A deals, then it's going to be a combination of those two approaches. And if you want to, you could, you, you could make these so that they reflect averages as well. So you could say the average seed deal you invest into is, you know, a smaller round and a smaller valuation. The average A is a larger round, a larger valuation. You can make these reflect the, that weighted average of the two and kind of all rounds there too. So you can average out all these assumptions to actually make it the same. Now, some people want to be very specific in showing a different portfolio construction for different approaches, especially so if there's a lot of variation between them, right? You know, sometimes uh, people will do the portfolio construction for like uh, different entry points, whether it's a seed or A. Sometimes we for like different uh, investment areas, different theses, different industries that they're investing into. Biotech, for example, versus you know hard tech versus frontier tech versus you know other other areas, and they may well have very different assumptions in terms of what the portfolio construction looks like for those different kind of types of strategies. In which case, the answer is okay. You know, so we in those cases usually what we do is we take this portfolio construction sheet and then we duplicate it. And actually, if you're doing two strategies, we'll duplicate it again. And then we'll take these two examples, and I'll rename one to, let's go back to the example of the C and the A strategy. I'll rename one C, one A. And then, uh, create that same table I showed before in terms of what the average check size was for the C, the average check size for the A, the blend of capital between the two, and, and then I will link that directly into here. So this one will be the seed. So this average check size will be the, the seed investment. And then this A, I'll link directly into my check size for that one. I'll usually change this label so that it reflects, if this was an A strategy, then I'll change it to a series A, B, C, D, E, kind of beyond. And change the graduation rates and exit rates kind of appropriately to reflect the actual kind of flow of those stages. Uh, where so by doing that i can then there's a couple other uh, little edits to this structure i have to make one is this uh this portfolio allocation has like the total amount of capital of employee i have to change this calculation so instead of using all invested capital it uses only the invested capital that's allocated to the a investing overall and then the number of companies that are that kind of progress through here i have to change this calc so it doesn't use all in all, you know, all invested capital, but only uses the capital that's appropriate for the stage. And so I have to do those two uh, edits, usually this entire line and then this one cell. And then that will flow the amount of capital that's being deployed towards this portfolio, the average for this type of investment, and then create out the rest of the calculation automatically. Now, once you have that, then you have two entirely separate for portfolio construction sheets that reflect two different ways to do things. At that point, you then have to average it, right? Well, at that point, you have two options. One is you can calculate out each one individually. So you could go to the forecast sheet, take the uh, calculations here that utilize the portfolio construction sheet, namely the follow-on investments, uh, to figure out when the timing of what follow-on investments happen, proceeds, write-offs, change the unrealized gain, uh, change the invested capital, those kind of like uh, tracking how a portfolio changes over time, companies change their portfolio over time. Those assumptions, you can take that same basic structure that's already there and then do it twice. 
do one for the C strategy and then do one for the A strategy and sum them together in here. And that's, a, that's a very easy way to do it. If you don't want to change those kind of core calcs in there, the other way is, is to use this one portfolio treasure sheet and then average it. So then this C, this investment can be the weighted average of your seed and A. Your, this round can be the weighted average of the seed and the A. So a weighted average by the uh, total capital that's allocated towards seed investing versus the total capital that's allocated to A investing. And you can create weighted average for all these assumptions here that reflect in all the assumptions here, then all the assumptions here, and all the assumptions here. And you can make them so they reflect the average of your two different portfolio structure sheets. And that way you're using two different, you're communicating your expectations of your, your different strategies clearly here. Um, and then you just average them together so that the flow into the model kind of stays the same, right? So that, that, that is the averaging approach kind of utilized here. Both ways can work, right? The, there's, no one, there's no one right way. Um, the best way is something that you understand and it's clear for you to understand and clear for you to explain to somebody else. So, you know, that's, that's kind of ultimately, and it has the right level of detail necessary for the decisions you have to make at that period of time. So that's kind of usually the, the, the way I kind of process and think about the, the right way to do it because it can vary by you know person and stage and kind of what you're interested in doing. But I, I wanted to detail out how to think about creating some more detail to portfolio strategies and how to do that within a few of the different kind of models. And I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, ask anytime. Happy to help.